Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov expressed Russia's disappointment that the UN did not quickly respond to the demand of an investigation into the incident of chemical weapons used near Aleppo. Syrian army units cite and siege on terrorists, restoring security to Al Jawadiyya and Al Qusayla, and scoring great progress in Damascus countryside. British and American intelligence admit the killing of an American and a British national while participating in fighting along with terrorist groups in Syria. Good afternoon, this is News in English from the Syrian Arab Division in Damascus. Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov expressed Russia's disappointment that the UN did not quickly respond to the demand of an investigation into the incident of chemical weapons use in Khan al-Asal near Aleppo. Terrorism is spreading quickly in the states neighboring Syria, including Turkey, whose current government is supporting terrorist groups in Syria by all means. The Turkish authorities announced that they detained a terrorist group affiliated to Al Nusra Front who had a quantity of a toxic serine gas. The group was planning to attack Andrelik Air Base in the Turkish city of Adana. Sources said that the serine gas arrived to Turkey from Libya abroad a passenger plane. Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov expressed Russia's disappointment that the UN did not quickly respond to the demand of an investigation into the accident of chemical weapons used in Khan al-Asal area near Aleppo. Speaking at a press conference he held in Moscow, Lavrov said Russia feels great disappointment with the political games of the UN General Secretariat, that it failed to respond to this demand with the possible accuracy and speed. Lavrov pointed out that the Russian foreign ministry was waiting for the Turks to provide information on the results which they came out with quickly and in full. He stressed the need for a thorough investigation into such cases. The Turkish media reported earlier that the Turkish intelligence seized 12 persons from Jabhat Nusra with links to Al-Qaeda in Adana city in southern Turkey and confiscated 2 kilograms of toxic serine gas ammunition, several documents and digital information were in their position. Meanwhile, the United Nations Security Council has added Al-Qaeda linked Jabhat Nusra terrorist group to the UN sanctions blacklist. A statement issued by the Security Council Committee monitoring sanctions said that the decision subjects Jabhat Nusra to the global arms embargo and asset freeze. U.S. diplomats said earlier that the Council's 15 members came unanimously in favor of listing Jabhat Nusra as a terrorist organization. Syria has repeatedly warned against uh, horrible crimes committed by a Nusra front, but the U.N. Security Council ignored the Syrian letters in this concern. The Russian Foreign Ministry spokesperson Alexander Lukashevich said, the Syria's request for holding a UN investigation of Qatar's involvement in the abduction of personnel from the United Nations Disengagement Observer Force ONDOF in Golan deserves attention. In a statement, Lukashevich said that the ONDOF is an important factor to stability, which is why the repeated incidents of attacking and abducting its personnel by members of the armed Syrian opposition drew harsh criticism from Security Council members. He noted that it is clear that those who seek to hamper the ONDOF mission are pushing the area towards a volatile situation. The United States Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, confirmed that a 33-year-old American woman called Nicole Lynn Mansfield was killed while fighting in Syria. Nicole's aunt, Monica Mansfield, said that Nicole had converted to Islam after her marriage to an Arab immigrant. Mansfield and two other foreigners were killed while they were fighting with armed terrorist groups in Syria. Britain also admitted the killing of one of its citizens while he was fighting along with terrorists in Syria. Earlier, an army unit ambushed a terrorist group in Idlib and killed three of its members, including Mansfield and the British National.
Chancellor of the Austria, Werner Feynman, called for finding a political solution for the crisis in Syria, voicing concern over the EU's decision to lift the embargo on supplying weapons to the Syrian opposition. During a cabinet session, Feynman said that more weapons don't solve the problem. Rather, this increases tension in the region, voicing regret over the positions of some EU countries regarding arming the opposition and Austria's failure to prevent the decision on this issue. Russian presidential assistant Eid Yuri Oshkov stressed that the European Union's decision to lift the embargo on providing the opposition in Syria with weapons does not help in preparing for the international conference to solve the crisis in Syria. Oshkov expressed in a press conference in Moscow his country's welcome of the Syrian authorities' intention to participate in the international conference. The Russian official expressed regret that there is not yet a clear picture on the part of the opposition regarding the international conference, nor there is a clear picture concerning the participation of regional countries. Hoping to know the details after the tripartite meeting between Russia, the U.S. and the U.N. on June 5th in Geneva. Students at Al Jazeera Private University in Derisor province have staged a spontaneous rally to hail the sacrifices of the Syrian army, calling upon it to eliminate all terrorist groups. The students headed for the headquarters of the province, marching from the university's building in Al Jira village, with a massive participation of the locals of both the countryside and the province, raising high banners and the Syrian flags and shouting slogans that salute the Syrian army. They further called upon the army to exterminate all the mercenary terrorists and to put an end to the bloodshed of Syrians. Terrorists fired three mortar shells on the residential neighborhood of Adwela area in Damascus, causing the injury of four citizens and big material damage in that area. An official source said that the terrorists targeted a crowded area, causing the injury of four citizens and big material damage to the residential buildings and the cars parked in the site. In al Aqsar city and its countryside, Syrian Arab army destroyed a number of terrorist dens in the, in the southwestern neighborhood of the city, killing some of them. Meanwhile, the Syrian Arab army units destroyed a number of the terrorist vehicles, weapons and ammunition near al daba Aqsar, known about as they destroyed two terrorist hideouts in the western neighborhood in the city. The Syrian Arab army also controlled a number of residential blocks in the middle of al Aqsar city where the terrorists were taking shelter, using them to target army units. Syrian Arab army units also eliminated an armed terrorist group in eastern al Abuida village in al Aqsar countryside, destroying all their weapons and ammunition. In Damascus countryside, units of the armed forces have restored security and peace to Saqqa, Tal Saqqa, Dilba and Al Mansura in eastern Ghouta and destroyed a 200 meters tunnel used by terrorists stretching from Halasta to the west of Damascus Homs Highway. Moreover, other units of the armed forces cleared Syrian mills and its surroundings area in Al Ghizlaniya from all terrorists. For the second day running, the Turkish have taken to the streets to express rejection of the reckless policies of Erdogan's government. Thousands have gathered in the streets surrounding Taksim Square, downtown Istanbul, and others headed for the parliament in the capital Ankara. Demanding Erdogan to resign, the Turkish police have fired tear gas to disperse the demonstrators. Reports have indicated that the public demonstrations expressed opposition to the attitude taken by the Turkish government vis-à-vis -vis Syria and other issues. That was it. More details on our website, www.syrianonline.sy. Stay with us after the break, our economic news.
Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. The manager of the Miles Company said that about 70,000 tons of wheat were imported through the signed contract with Iran, which was estimated at 100,000 tons. As there were specific contracts of about 25,000 tons and others that reached 13,000 tons, while 10,000 has been imported. He also pointed out to the necessity of the agreement signed with the Ukrainian government to provide 100,000 tons, adding that five miles will be established with a capacity reaching 1,420 tons a day, and these projects have been directed. A center for grain was opened in Idlib Governorate in preparation to receive the wheat crops from farmers this season, while the needed technical committees were formed for sampling and receiving the crops and then storing them in the silo. Moreover, it is expected that about 60,000 tons of wheat will be received, whereas the total of the wheat cultivated area approaches 60,000 hectares. The fuel committee in Damascus decided to immediately interfere in order to distribute gas to citizens after the success of the distribution campaign in several neighborhoods a few days ago. The new mechanism depends on using centers for the storage and marketing in addition to surplus cars in this establishment of the storage and consumers to be used as distribution centers in the neighborhoods that do not have accredited centers, whereas the new mechanism will be applied according to a schedule that deals with all the problems witnessed during the previous distribution campaign to include all Damascus neighborhoods. Thousands of demonstrators raised slogans in front of the European Central Bank in Germany against the austerity policies applied to deal with the debt crisis of the Eurozone. The demonstrators emphasized that the austerity measures of the European Central Bank contributed to the economic recession and the increasing unemployment rate in the Eurozone, indicating that they will prevent the employees from entering the European Central Bank for several hours in order to highlight the bank's role in such disastrous policy. Oil ended its weekly dealings down in Europe and the U.S. after relaunching a Canadian main pipeline for transporting the crude oil, which refers to supplies inflation in a market facing dull demands amid weak economic outlook. The U.S. shares fell more than 1%, yet the, the three major indexes in Wall Street have ended May on gains. Moreover, the European shares retreated, registering their lowest level in three weeks and impacted by profit sales in the 12th month end. After strong U.S. data, renewed fears of reducing the stimulus measures in the U.S. On the other hand, the Nikkei index refreshed after falling lately. However, it has registered its first monthly decline in 10 months. And now over to the exchange rates according to the bulletin of the Central Bank of Syria. Ladies and gentlemen, this was our economic news for today. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.